Hi, this is Gloria, your life coach. Welcome to another episode of Life's a Shuffle. Hi, this is Ron Johnson, your life coach, leadership coach, motivation speaker, and health coach. And welcome to another episode of Life's a Shuffle. Today, we're going to discuss Freestyle Thursday. You know, what's on my list of freestyle and my list of this week is I have nine more days, actually probably more like 14 more days, nine more days before I shut down my gym and 14 days before I leave California indefinitely. And I've been talking about this and I'm very, very excited to enter a new chapter of my life. I'm very excited to um, experience uh, less people. Um, it's really overcrowded in California, very expensive. Those that know or live here already. I'm more importantly very excited because I will thus be achieving a lot of goals and more than dreams I set out in my life since I can't remember since I was 16, 17 years old achieving that right now. And it feels very wonderful. Um, but I guess this has been a tough week for me as well. Um, you know, I, as you get through going through things, monotony, let's say you're doing the same over and over again. And I come to realize that doing the same thing over and over again, that's not in line with my values, really creates a lot of emotional trauma, ups and downs, emotional. Uh, it can create, uh, for me, when I'm going through stress sometimes, I eat junk food. Junk food is french fries. That's my, my go-to. Um, but the reason why you have these issues of go-to food or stress and and all these things are happening to you is because you inherently, your body does not like where it's at. The mind doesn't like where it's at. So it needs happiness somewhere. So if, if hanging out with a friend or you know drinking a beer or eating junk food provides you happiness, the body will do it, but it's only temporarily. So I came to Crossroads. I realized now I want to be and do something completely different in my, in my life. And if I don't make moves now, I will only in, inhibit my time from actually crossing that jump or that leap. You know, as you guys know that I'm a personal trainer and health coach, and as I transition out of this, it's very hard to, you know, the money's coming in and you have to make money to pay bills. Right now I'm doing that and it's creating more suffering than, than that's quality of life for me. And I want to focus on really coaching clients, help people out and and really all of us need help and get in their mind in, in the right order because this is my purpose in life. And that's why I feel very overwhelmed, exhausted this week because I know I'm only got 14 more days in California. I'm trying to finish all these client sessions, but I want to do something else. It, it's just, it's like a pulse. It's getting louder and it's getting more apparent. So that's kind of what's going on in my mind right now. What about you, Gloria? You're ready. You're just, you're, you're ready to get out of, the current situation you have right now, I think because what it is too is in the back of your mind, you're, you already know what you really want to do. So while, and I think we had this discussion earlier before the podcast is that while you're doing what you're currently doing, there's something else that you want to be working on, but you can't because your time right now is here with what you're doing right now. If that makes sense. It does. So it's kind of like, God, I want to, I want to do this. Like, let's say I want to sit in front of my computer and I want to work on my flyer and I, I need to get this out. And I have all these great ideas in my head right now if I want to create it, but you're doing something else right now, you know, you're doing your job. So you can't, you can't just leave and go to the computer and work on that. So kind of like the excitement, kind of you kind of lose the ex excitement a little bit because of that, and that's um. No, it's worse. You forget. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you forget. Okay. <laughs> or if by the time I do have time, I'm like, oh god, I'm so exhausted. I don't want to open my computer. I, want, I just want to sit and, and and eat or sit and watch TV. So the energy, where for me, everybody has different energy times of the day. Mine's always in the morning. So if I want to get something done. Early morning is the best, um, but throughout the day, my energy goes down, and if I'm very fatigued, um, I won't get it done. I just won't, won't do it, and it gets more and more behind because I'm going to work on the flyer, off the, off the podcast we were talking about, the meetup group, um, those that, that haven't known me or haven't seen, I'm doing virtual seminars this coming Saturday, so you and I are doing a seminar together. Mm -hmm. And obviously with that, you got to market that, right? I mean, unless I had a $10,000, $15,000 marketing budget budget I can be working with, I can be doing a lot of different things out there getting in front of people, but you don't. You have a limited amount of resources and you got to start small, right? Which is create flyers, use a platform that already exists, Facebook, 
uh, Instagram, as you know, today, if you notice, LinkedIn now has stories too. So the LinkedIn is now getting into that program. So you now how on Instagram you post on your story, you have the same thing on uh, LinkedIn now. So I post on my story a couple of times this week than LinkedIn. So it's more or less when I don't have the time um, to do what I need to work on to get my business going. And what I'm trying to really say is if you really want to do something in life and you really, really want it in your heart, you have to spend time working on it. You can't say, well, I want this, but I'm working on this now. I want this, but I'm doing this now. No, you got to put aside the time to work on that if you want that to grow. Mm-hmm. The other day, my son messaged me. He's like, dad, I want to start a business. Oh. So first thing I asked, I said, son, this is my youngest son, Isaiah. I said, so son, what kind of business do you want? Because you know, I want to get more clarity. He says, well, I want to own a car dealership. What kind of car dealership, son? He says, I want Mercedes-Benz and luxury cars. Mm-hmm. I says, uh, now my other question was, why do you want to be an entrepreneur? Uh, because that's something, something I always want to do. So my next question is, hey, son, how are you going to brand yourself? Then he, he said, I don't know. So the reason I asked him a question about brand, right? A brand becomes how you identify yourself. Mm-hmm. Amazon with a little smiley face is how they identify yourself. So if you see a smiley face, you know it's Amazon. We see the brown UPS truck, you know, that's UPS. So the reason I said, hey, brand yourself, because then the brand will create the image. So the brand will create the image so people can recognize you by certain something, right? Like me, I'm known as RJ, RJ Health and Fitness. My first name is Ron, last name is Johnson. Some people don't even know that. Some people as RJ. So I'm trying to get him to think through the process. First is the reason I asked him why he's going to own a business, because people don't understand owning a business is not the glitz and glamour you see. Okay. Own a business, you make great money, you set your own schedule. Yeah, it's after about 20 years of really hard work, okay? Second, which is probably the most important I should mention first, is that if you don't know what you want to do, you won't create any energy to keep going at times are tough. You won't create the energy you need to work 15 hours a day, work 12 hours a day, work 20 hours a day, nonstop, month after month. So if you're doing something just to do it, but not really want to do it, then when times get tough or when things are not going your way, you would give up. So obviously that's not what you really want to do because that's really what you want to do. You wouldn't give up no matter what. So that's what I was trying to get my son to understand because coming from a business perspective, I had to find something, you know, personal training was, like I mentioned before on other podcasts, it was to get me on my full-time career. Now doing personal training, I realized I want to do something more impactful, not for myself, but for the world and become this coach and helping people is how I impact the world. Because if I can help impact one person, how I impact them, stay with them forever. They never impact somebody else, but the change in your life, not just changing the body, but changing your life. That is so powerful right there. Mm-hmm. Amen. Thank and you. Was like, I felt like that was such a good preach. Like, mm-hmm. I um, preach you know, choir, right? <laughs> <laughs> I know. You should start singing too. I felt like I'll, I'll be in the background. But, um, back of finger? <laughs> No, I can't sing. I'll just, I'll, I'll be the dancer in the background, just waving my hands while you do that. And I just thought about um, Freestyle Thursday. You know, I, I feel like you should also do a, a rap freestyle in it. <laughs> if I knew how to rap or beatbox, I would have done it already. That would have been, been the intro. So cool. Right. There you go. Um, I, I, I was- stick to what I'm good at. That's what I do now at this point. <laughs> you know what? doesn't matter i think for me um when i'm out there like if i go dancing i, I don't know I, i'm not saying i'm a great dancer i i do love to dance but hey you know what after like a drink i don't even care i just want to dance if i love the music i'm gonna dance so I, I don't know how i look what i look to other people out there watching me if they're if i'm dancing in the middle of the dance floor but I don't care if I'm feeling it, I'm feeling it. Keep it going. I love it. Yeah. If you can rap, who cares? Whatever rap is to you, do it. (laughs) I like, I I really enjoy that. Okay. Okay. I will. Yeah. I was, um, so go back, going back to, um, with your son, uh, what I was thinking about, you know, listening to you is that there's one, there's something good about that though, that I find is that, he has you to look up to and he has you to guide him through this. And the fact that he's already thinking about it right now at such a young age um, and then he has you behind him all this, which 
will help him maybe later on and realize if this is really what he wants to do later or not. You know what? So those that don't know this is that I don't have the best relationship with my kids. But for me, it's now I want to try building that relationship because time is not over. So I'm not dead. They're not dead. We're still alive. So you still have time. You still have the ability to do it because you're still alive. So I mm-hmm. thought that was great. He reached out to me because there's something he wants to do, but he doesn't know where to turn to. So he turned to who, you. Who, who would not turn to their parents? But if my dad was still alive today, I would turn to him for all business because he was a business owner himself. Mm-hmm. So maybe this is a legacy too. So, <laughs> you know, but it, it felt really good. The fact that he reached out to me and says, dad, I'm going to start a business. What should I do? Even at a young age, when I was his age, I didn't want to own a business. He's 15. I, I saw what my dad went through with employees and people and the ups and downs. Like, oh, I never want to own a business. I really said that to myself, even at that age. But fast forward 20 years later, I have my business. I can't go back to not owning a business. It's in the blood. It's in the Johnson it's blood. blood. <laughs> it's That's in the Johnson say, but- blood. Out of all of Johnson Blood, the DNA, and there's only been, how many business owners have there been? Myself, my dad, and that's it. You know, um, I'm going to go back to, I think, our very, very first podcast when we talked about regrets. And this is one of the things that we talked about was, you know, not having that relationship with with your kids. And I think as far as I can remember, I remember saying something like, you know, as they get older, it'll change because when they start having, um, when they start getting to a certain age, maybe becoming like young adults and, and to a point where they'll end up having maybe eventually having their own lives, right? They'll see all these things and whatever it was that happened between you and their mom they'll they probably won't even question that because what they will want eventually is to get to know you like you know you know I have a dad let me get to know my dad let me have a relationship with my dad because when they get older sometimes kids they look for that they and and I can I can't speak for them because I don't know what they're thinking and how they're feeling but I can almost feel like I guess I can say I can almost relate to it, it you know, if if I'm if I feel like I know what they're thinking, but I'm not I really don't for me, because I've, as I've gotten older, see, the difference is they didn't hate you or they they didn't hate you as much as I felt like I hated my father growing up. Right. But as I've gotten older, I started looking for that. I started looking for that type of relationship and reaching out to my dad. Like, I think it's time, you know, because they're getting older. They need, they need a father, Mm -hmm. you know, and I'm sure they're grateful and I appreciate their, their mom. And it's not easy being a single parent and they know that and they love their mom, but they eventually will want a relationship with their father. I mean, they're boys. The boys want a relationship with their father because it's different. And, um, and I think, you know, even though they, they don't, they may not say it to you, um, this is, this could be their way of reaching out to you slowly. I think it's a good start. And um, I think what I feel and what I see here is that you're inspiring them somehow. I won't doubt it. I won't doubt they see that. Um I think as human beings, we want understanding from whatever we're going through. And I think my kids seem, you know, they're at that age where they do have social media, Facebook, Instagram. I see my post. They probably say, well, my dad's different. I want to get to know my dad. Or how can I reach out to him? Or how can I have a conversation? And they don't know how, so they don't do it. Or in this case, my son may use the way he talked about a business to to reach out to me. And that, that was great. I responded back right away. Um but we need to um, – I think there is no right or wrong time to, to, to do something good. For me, this is the right time to connect with my kids. And for them, this is what they need. They probably need that father figure. I, I think, mm-hmm. as always, I've thought to myself, um, um, their mom did an awesome job raising them as a single parent because I've been in California. She's been on the East Coast. 
Um, she's done a good job, but I, at this point, I think they need they want to go further in life. Mm-hmm. And when they see me, they see me going further. And who doesn't want to go further in life? No one stands still. Mm-hmm. For them, it's the time to go further. They're becoming you know young adults, and um, as they transition from high school to college to now becoming in the workforce or owning a business, they need guidance. When I was there, my, my dad didn't he guided me, but it was more, how can I explain this? He guided me in a sense preparing for the future, but didn't guide me in the present. And the best way to describe that, he's preparing me for what I will ha- need later on, but at the moment I need something different. See, because that's why I always talk about, I didn't understand when I was a kid, but I understand now. So he's always preparing me for the future, but not the present. Now, that may have been how he was raised. Hey, you know, I'm going to raise you a certain way because you're going to need this in the future. I'm not for sure he's not going to answer these questions, but he did prepare you for him now. So ironically, maybe me saying I didn't want a business at a young age, their age, 15, 16, but my dad still needs these values. Then before 15 and 16, we closed down his business. Um, cause after he closed down, closed down his business, he became retired and I started in the workforce. So working at Jim I worked at foot action. I worked at fries. Now I got my own business. I think it's now those tools I was giving. Now I can find open that toolbox and use them now. When I need them because now I have the experience. Yeah. Now you have the drive. Now you have the determination. Now you have to go. Now you know how to pursue what you want at 25, 26, 30, you have no determination to pursue what you want. There's a few out there that really, really have it, but most don't. And, and through your experiences, whether it's good or bad, now you can help with your kids, your son, and guide them through that. Oh, heck yeah. You know, and, and that's, where, that's, that's where you come in. And I mean, I think it's great. It's wonderful that, you know, that they're, they're, they're reaching out to you and, and that you're there. You know, I would, I mean, heck, I would take advantage of that. Like, oh my God, I'm starting to cry right now. <laughs> I think, cause I'm thinking, I wish my dad would do the same thing. So, you know, uh, I think this is, uh, I think it's wonderful. This is a, a, this could be a great start for you and, um, and your kids. Like I, I, like when I said I wish, because I think I try to reach out, but I feel like, I felt like reaching out wasn't working or I, maybe he didn't, he doesn't want me back in his life. Who knows? You know, but um, yeah, and I think with with the boys getting older, they're at that stage and that point in their life where life is beginning for them and they're having a better understanding of a lot of things now. That's right. So, yeah, I mean, they were younger. They didn't understand. They didn't know any they and they didn't have to know anything. They didn't have to know what was happening with you and their mom. They didn't need to know all that. They were young. But as they, they get older now, they're just, at, you know, like I said, they're at a better understanding of life now. And um, they're looking for that relationship with you. I think they are. I think at this point, they're looking for that missing piece. Yeah. They're looking for the the piece of puzzle, puzzle they need, and they're ready to now make an impact. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm surprised my son with their own electric car dealership. Great. What are you going to brand yourself? What are you going to call yourself? Um, because that, to me, is a very key. Is what are you going to brand your business? And why is it important to you? Because I want to understand his, what his thought process was. If he said, well, I can make a lot of money and all this stuff, now I realized, wait a minute, son, that's not how it works the first five years. The first five years, you're going to really have to navigate this new paradigm because you're no one that starts a car dealership knows all the ins and outs. You can you can read all these books, but when the book was written, could have been five years ago, things could change, right? And what is it now? Because of COVID, I was hearing from one of my uh, police clients that uh, they're allowing people to test drive the cars alone. So what happened, so, someone stole two cars. Oh my God. Because they test drive the car alone. So if you're a dealership, that's a new paradigm. How do you navigate that sucker? Mm-hmm. Because now you can't have a person in the car with you because social, social distance, you, give, you get a copy of that guy's driver's license or her driver's license, and they take the car for a test drive and don't come back. Yeah. Wow. And being in California, that's a slap on the wrist. He was telling me that the guy, they actually, the stupid guy steals one of these uh, Suburbans at like 80K, okay? And it has OnStar. So not like they can they GPS it. Kind of find out he was one of these construction workers. They found the car and obviously they tailed it. 
Um, then he parked the car somewhere. He got a call dispatch. It's like, hey, I want to turn myself in. Turn himself in. And a few hours later, he's, he's let go. They find, again, they find him stealing another car. Oh, same person? Same person. Oh, gosh. But I asked, I asked more context. Like, is this a ring or something? What's going on? Mm-hmm. He's a meth dealer. He needs a car. Mm. That makes sense. Not meth dealer. He's a meth addict. Oh, so okay. now he just does the thing. Okay, I need a car. Takes <laughs> one. Yeah. So how do you navigate that? So that's why I asked him the question, you know, why does he want this business? Because things like that I need to navigate. Now, granted, okay, you can say, well, he has insurance. They have insurance. But insurance company figure out, wait a minute here. I'm, I, I can't fit these bills with these missing cars. They start charging more for insurance, right? So well, I'll find out more detail how he's going to be a car dealership owner. Yeah, I mean, you know? he still has a lot of time. He's still young, you know, and and like I said, um, this is what you're here for. Yeah. Not only as a father to them, but, you know, like a mentor, right? So I, I'm sure this came from somewhere, you know. He can't just be like, I want to be a business business owner or whatever let me call my dad no it's i think it really came from somewhere it was i think it was something that's been waiting to happen you know like aha i want to talk to him i want to reach out to him how do i do it how do i start it where do i start and if that's the case gosh that's totally understandable okay i went through that i didn't even know how to reach out to my dad wow see i i didn't i had to go through somebody to try to reach out to him and how they did it, both of them, even now your youngest one, you know, I think that's so cool because he's really growing up. Yeah, he's coming to his own person. And I think it's 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 so much more better and it has more meaning when they actually reach out more to you personally than going through like a middle person, you know? I think it does. I mean, it right there builds more trust, more bond with your uh, with your son, daughter, your kids, any person. Yeah, because they really want to do it. So, yeah, I'm happy. I'm happy that this is happening for you. And I'm happy that, you know, you, your kids are are reaching out to you. And I think it would be a great, wonderful start for you and, and the boys. Mm, interesting. Good story. Yeah. So that's cool. Um, what else is up? Gosh, I was, I was just kind of <laughs> for a minute there. I was I was so touched by it, and I was just started getting teary. I I think because I was also thinking about my situation, right? I thought about like, gosh, I wish my dad would do the same thing. <laughs> you know, I went through a phase where oh, he doesn't want me anymore. He doesn't want me. He doesn't want to have anything to do with me. I gosh, I was doing that for a while, but I don't know. I mean, I think. You know, I, I made a, um, I'm sure I, I made, I made a mistake too. I'm at fault too at, at some point, but whatever that is. And it, like, even what you said, you know, when is the right time? We don't know when the right time is. It'll just, it'll happen. And I think for you and uh, with your kids, it's, you know, it's happening. So I think it's, it's wonderful. Oh, it's happening. Yeah. Good. As a matter of fact, my oldest will be on our podcast soon. Just don't know when. I'm waiting for his microphone to be delivered from Amazon, get him set up so he can nice. uh, be on our podcast. I'm I excited like for that. And did you kind of discuss the kind of topic we want to talk about maybe? Um, I haven't discussed it with him yet. I will discuss But I think we discussed it. It was uh, growing up without a father being present. And I want to get more clarity on how they're feeling. Yeah. You no, know, granted, I heard what the, how the mom feels, but that's just clearly frustration. You know, she's by herself, she needs help and all that stuff. I'm going to hear their perspective, you know. But this is, on. yeah, and this is between you and them, not between uh, this. This has nothing to do with her anymore. You know what I mean? And um, I think it'd be interesting to hear their side and even growing up what they felt and what they saw and, you know, at, at that time and then now you know, what they see now and how they feel now compared to how they were feeling when they were younger. Cause mm-hmm. it really does change it everything. Does. Everything changes. Feel your feelings change. You know, as you get older, it just, just changes. So yeah, I, I I'm excited about that. That would be cool. That would be exciting. So 
now it's time for you to rap. <laughs> I can't do that. <laughs> if I tried, I don't think I'll try. I, I don't think I'll try. Because I wouldn't know how to start. I wouldn't know how to end. Freestyle. Just, you freestyle. freestyle. And then if you want to rhyme, you can rhyme. Freestyle talking, not a problem. Freestyle rapping, <laughs> just, just, I stick to my day job. I know what I'm good at. <laughs> That's too funny. I, I, maybe I can ask my son if he'll rap. We'll see. Oh, there you go. If he has, you know, if he could do it, why not? And the beatboxing, oh my God, I would love to hear that. Oh, they know nothing about beatboxing. They're, they're too young. <laughs> <laughs> you'll never know, but you know you'll what? You'll never know, right? Yeah, you'll never know. But I mean, they're into sports, so that's that's cool. Um, there's, I'm sure there's so much that they could talk about. You know, I think the other one would be balancing. You know, balancing school, sports, friends, home, COVID, um, social distancing, all that. Yeah, kind of stuff. with their age at, at that age right now, it's it's a lot. This this whole COVID thing, I'm just. I'm sorry if I offend anybody out there, but I'm so done with this. I, I just, can we just go back to our normal life? You know, I just, this, um, I think I've told you about this with um, distance learning and being in front of the computer all day, staring at the kids and, and just watching them. I, I can't do it anymore. I'm just zoomed out and, I was thinking to myself this week that, man, if this was to, if we have to keep this going until for the end of the year, or I don't know how long I can last. I don't know how I'm, I'm how long I'm going to last, you know, but thank God we're going back to school. We're going back on campus um, in a couple of weeks. Um, so I'm looking forward to that and I'm happy. And speaking to with a lot of the kids at our school there, they can't wait. They can't wait to go back because, I mean, I think a lot of us are really done with, with this whole situation. I know that it's still not as safe, you know. Um, it's still pretty scary out there and, and, and dangerous, whatever it is that so many people are feeling. Still a lot of many people that are very paranoid out there. Um, but, you know, time will come. It's like... When 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 do we go back to to just living our normal normal life again? I get it. I know it's not going to be the same, and it might you know this is this could be the new new norm. But let's go already. Let's keep moving. Move on. And that brings up uh, uh, the point is that you know with a lot of things happening, um, a lot of people have felt we've been lied to as a nation about COVID, you know, what to do, how to behave. And um, I think for all of us getting frustrated because there's so many opinions. Let's you open up COVID right now. There's a, a million different opinions, conspiracy theories, people that work with the CDC, people that work with the who, and oh my God, it, it, at some point you have to shut it down. My client the other day says, I, I'm the pandemic first happened. I was very scared. I didn't want to go out. But within the last two months, he says, I stopped listening and looking at any news. And I said to myself, I'm going to live my life. Because he got tired of living in fear. He got tired of being in shelter. He didn't understand it, don't know what to do, doesn't know how to behave. It's very, very uh, touch and go with people's you know, feelings. Some people are really scared. Some people are in the middle. Some people are okay. So we have to navigate that situation too. So he just says, I'm going to live my life. And you know what? Whatever you decide to do, it's always your choice. It is. So with that being said, thanks for listening to Life's a Shuffle, another Freestyle Thursday. Um, definitely can't wait to get my son on here to talk about his life and talk about my life this week. Next week, it'll be almost three, four days before I leave. We talk about what's going on. I'm super excited. Packing is crazy right now. But guys, thank you for your support and thank you for tuning in to another episode of Life's a Shuffle. This is Ron Johnson, life coach, leadership coach, and motivational speaker. And don't forget, join us this coming Sunday, um, September 27th, um, with uh, Ron's uh, virtual seminar. Um, again, this is Gloria, life coach. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Life's a Shuffle.